Um, my name's Blair, I'm a master's student of biology. Um, this isn't my area of expertise, but I'm very interested in it, and I've, I've gone through and I've read the journal articles and the, the primary literature and stuff like that. Um, so I'm talking in, about the endurance running hypothesis, um, of which is uh, which also includes persistence hunting, um, and it has to do with human evolution. So what is the endurance running hypothesis? Um, it states that the evolution of certain human characteristics can be explained as ad adaptations to endurance running, um, or long distance running. Um, so what exactly counts as endurance running? Um, Lieberman um, is the anthropologist who is one of the main proponents of this hypothesis, he says that endurance running is the ability to run 5Ks or more, um, which isn't really a long way. Um, but he also talks about humans evolving to run marathons. Um, so it's not a straw man for me to talk about marathon running as endurance running. Um, some other endurance running events are ultra marathons which can be anything from sort of 50 k's right out to over 200 k's. And the Taramara Indians from Mexico um, are known to run over 600 k's um, in a week during festivals. Um, so uh, another definition, what exactly is persistence hunting? Um, it's a hunting technique in which hunters use a combination of running, walking, and tracking to pursue a prey to exhaustion, then they just walk up and kill it. Um, they run it and run it and run it until it collapses. Um, so the main claim of the endurance running hypothesis um, is set out here that humans are exceptionally strong endurance runners. We're really, really good at endurance running compared to a lot of other animals. Um, they claim that these traits began evolving in the early Homo genus two to two and a half million years ago, um, and that these traits evolved through persistence hunting or maybe endurance running to scavenge fresh, freshly kill, uh, fresh kills before other scavengers could get there. So they're saying that humans would see this kill miles and miles away endurance run to it and beat the hyenas and the vultures and, and that sort of thing. Um, and the, one of the main things about this is that they say that these traits um, have little or no use in walking. Um, so that these traits are solely for running and endurance running. Um, and sort of right off the bat you can be a bit dubious about this. Um, Endurance running is a huge amount of energy output. Um, so for persistent hunting, you might be running for two or three hours at a time and covering um, five to 20 Ks um, without guarantee for a meal. Um, so if you don't get your meal, you've run 10, 15 Ks for two and a half hours, and now you gotta walk home and you're tired and you're somebody else's meal. Um, persistence hunting is also really rare. Um, Pickering and Bunn in 2007, uh, these guys are two anthropologists, um, they pointed out that um, one of the tribes near the, I think it's pronounced Khan, um, the, the Hadza people, they don't endurance run at all. You, uh, so they don't persistence hunt via running. They just don't do it, they've never seen it done. Um, but they do walk for their persistence hunting and they'll walk an animal to death. And Liverman has been able to film only two spontaneous persistence hunts. Um, he prompted them to do, do some so that he could film them. And of the eight attempts, only three of them worked. And during these attempts, the, um, the runners could come to the jeep and get a a drink of water, that sort of thing. So it's it's not something that happens every single day. Somebody goes out, runs an animal to death, drinks at home. It's it's really quite rare. Um, and running for several hours 
takes a lot of energy, generally in the form of carbohydrates, which early homo didn't have a lot of access to. They weren't eating a lot of grains, um, which you see marathon runners nowadays doing. Um, and the conditions two million years ago didn't lend themselves very well to persistence hunting. Um, two million years ago in Africa, it was a savanna woodland. And that's the savanna woodland. It's, it's really hard to track something through that. It's really hard to run through that. Um, if the heads are, um, the heads are generally use arrows for hunting, they'll shoot an animal and then chase after it when it's wounded. If the animal runs into something like that, they generally give up. They leave it, they don't chase it through that, they go walking home, maybe they'll find something else along the way. Um, the other thing is that women are much stronger endurance runners than men over the really long distances. Um, which is not what you'd expect of the men or the hunters going out there after the big animals. Um, and finally, walking is much more efficient. Um, but Leiberman lists 26 traits that he say are adaptions to endurance running. Um, I've just pulled out some of the major ones that come up quite often um, and have had quite a lot of research done on them. Done on them. Um, one of them is just our aptitude for endurance running. We're really good at it. Um, our mostly hairless body and our sweat glands for heat loss. Um, our much shorter toes than other primates. Um, all of our springy tendons, like our Achilles. Um, all sorts of different balancing adaptations because running is, is quite an unbalanced movement. Um, and large glutes. Um, so for our sort of aptitude for endurance running, um, we're incredibly strong. Given the right length, um, we can beat a horse in a race. If we race a horse in a marathon, we're going to win, especially if it's hot. Um, and we can hold a speed of about 6.5 meters per second for over two hours. Um, and a horse is only going to hold that for sort of two and a half minutes. Um, so we can outrun almost any animals, particularly when it's hot. Um, but all of this, to me, doesn't make a clear-cut picture that we must have evolved to be endurance runners. Google hot, sweaty runner, and that's what you get. Um, so the, the claim is that we've, we've lost so much of our body hair um, as compared to the apes, chimpanzees gorillas, they all have full body hair, but we only mostly have full head hair. Um, and we also have sweat glands, something that's really quite rare in the animal kingdom, and not, not a lot of stuff uses sweat. Um, we have cooling systems in the blood, if my core gets really hot, blood comes out to the skin so that it can um, lose heat faster. And running generates up to six times the heat as walking. Um, but this is probably my weakest counter-argument, but there is some sort of counter-argument. Um, some have said that our reduced hair loss is due to our reduced need for sun protection. In the midday sun, the sun comes straight down on us. It's really just hitting the head and the shoulders. So we have hair on our heads to protect our heads. Other quadrupedal animals their backs laid out, so they're getting sun on their whole back. They can't be hairless or they're going to get really, really burnt. Um, I'd also like to say that we evolved them in Africa and it's really, really hot there, so we need to be able to cool ourselves down quite well. Um, <coughs> and the other point that I want to bring up is that um, sometimes these things fail and it can do major damage. This guy here is Chris Lee, he's a, he won the Hawaiian Ironman once, and that's said to be one of the hardest Ironmans in the world. He collapsed after a race. His blood had been coming to, the, to his skin for so long to lose heat. It had starved his intestines. He had to have a huge tract of intestine taken out because it had been starved of oxygen for that long. So these things can fail us. Um, one of the other big claims is that 
we've got short toes, um, and that is an adaptation for running. Um, it's been shown that a 20% increase in the length of your toe will double the, for the, the force and mechanical energy going through your foot. Um, and it's pretty likely that that increased force and metabolic, uh, that increased force and mechanical work is going to increase the metabolic cost. And so evolution is always trying to push for more efficiency. So they say we evolved shorter toes, less mechanical force, less metabolic cost. Um, and that long toes really don't matter when we're walking. We can walk and have really long toes. It doesn't increase the mechanical force. Um, or the metabolic cost. Um, the other one is that long toes when running are very easily strained um, and it can do a lot of damage. But a not uncommon injury for military marches is sprained toes and they're just walking, but they get their toes sprained too, particularly longer toes. Um, but they use this evidence as um, to, to lead them to the conclusion that humans evolved to be endurance runners. Um, another one is springy tendons, um, which the kangaroo uses amazingly. Um, I've heard that they can run at 30 miles an hour or 50 miles an hour with the same energy output. Um, they just get that much energy back from their springy tendons. Um, so Bramble and Liverman, I I think Bramble is a, a biomechanist um, and Leibermann's an anthropologist. They claim that in contrast to apes, human legs have many more long spring-like tendons that generate force economically. And these energy savings can be up to 50% of the metabolic cost of running. When, but springy tendons don't do a lot for walking. As you walk, you sort of step out, land on the heel. There's no sort of spring back with that. Um, and walking bipedally is really unstable. Um, you're, you're only standing on one leg at a time. But it gets even worse when you're running. If there's an aerial phase and you're not connected to the ground. So it's really hard to run without a tail. So we have these big glutes that fire while we're running. They keep us upright. We have counter-rotation in the trunk as we run. Our arms swing. Um, our wide shoulders, narrow hips, they all help to balance us when we run. Um, but a lot of these things Aren't, aren't so necessary when we're walking because we have one foot planted on the ground at all times. Um, so the, there's all of these adaptations for, um, for balancing are said to have evolved for endurance running. Um, my sort of, my counterclaim to that is what about sprinting? It, it's running, just running really fast. There's an aerial phase, it's really unstable. You need all of these balancing mechanisms when you're sprinting. Um, again, the, the springy tendons are going to help a lot when you're sprinting. You're going to be able to sprint faster with more springy tendons. And long toes would equally be inhibitory to sprinting. Um, again, really fast sprinting is going to cause strains on long toes. Um, the other thing is, we're not very good sprinters. Most other animals are much faster than us. But if something's chasing us to kill us, we don't have to outrun it. We just have to outrun the guy beside us. Um, and that's, that's quite a strong selection pressure to run faster than other humans. Um, I think this is the last one. The sort of large glutes. We have really, really big butts compared to a lot of the other um, primates. Um, and Leibermann showed that the glutes activate when running right before footfall to prevent us sort of carrying on and toppling over. Um, the glute fires, it holds us upright. We lean forward just a bit but don't fall over. Um, and that having big glutes isn't necessary. 
sorry, isn't necessary for walking. We walk just fine with small. We could walk just fine with small glutes, but we couldn't do a good squat with really good glutes. Um, this sort of squat here, this guy's probably doing the best one. All of these are terrible, but um, <laughs> that's it's the resting position for two thirds of the world. Um, people call it the Asian squat, the indigenous people squat, the the paleo chair. When they they don't sit in a chair, they squat down. They'll eat dinner, do whatever. Um, and you need big glutes, you need the range of motion to be able to do that. Um, they're also, glutes are really necessary for deadlifts. You want to lift something really heavy off the ground, you have to squat down to it and pick it up. Um, this is just something that I wanted to bring up. Liverman kept talking about heel strike. Um, and he should really know better. He worked, he worked with the the Khan and he he saw them running in bare feet, but he keeps he keeps talking about heel strike in his papers. Um, I don't know if his evidence would be stronger or weaker if he was using sort of forefoot running or midfoot running. Um, but heel strike is re is just all kinds of bad. This guy slams his heel down, wrecks his ankle, wrecks his knee. It's all running up through the hip going to give him shin splints, tendonitis, all sorts of terrible things. This guy here, he's absorbing all of the shock in his foot. Um, he's not going to do damage like that guy is. Um, and there's also some really good reasons not to do endurance running. Um, high intensity endurance um, runners, like professional marathon runners, often have a lot of systematic inflammation, oxidative damage, respiratory tract infections, osteoarthritis, <laughs> tendonitis. Um, I think the peak age for a marathon runner is something like 23, 25, and they're burnt out by, uh, by 30. Um, so part of this is from a really high carb diet, um, which is quite an unnatural thing for humans, which I wouldn't mind talking about on a separate occasion. But um, another part of that is high cortisol levels. Cortisol is a stress hormone. Um, you get a lot of it when you're stressed, if you're cold, if you're running away from something. Um, there's generally bad stuff's happening and you have to deal with it right now. Um, so small, uh, small short doses of cortisol are great for burning fat, they're great for the immune system. But if you have high cortisol for sort of three hours at a time, and you do that almost every single day of the week, um, it's, it lowers the immune system, you get a whole lot of systematic inflammation, um, and that's, that has flow on effects for the upper resp respiratory tract infections, the tendonitis, all of these sorts of things. Um, it's also really hard on the brain. They did memory tests on some marathon runners after finishing the marathon, and their results were as bad as someone with oxidative brain damage. Um, they just had really, really poor recall skills. Um, a marathon running can also cause a lot of heart problems, um, which can lead to heart failure, um, pacemakers, that sort of thing. They found that an unfit marathon runner, after finishing a marathon, so they finished a marathon in six hours, because that's sort of the general cutoff time they kick you off course, um, they'll have um, heart damage for three months after that marathon. Um, so my final word is that I believe that humans evolved for walking long distances in the hot sun. We also evolved to sprint as quickly as we could when we're in danger. And a lot of the strength that we see for our endurance running comes from these two traits. Um, Tabata did some experiments and found that sprint interval training, high intensity sprints as fast as you can, um, made, made people much better at sprinting 
and endurance running. But it was done on a bike, so it was endurance biking, as compared to the group who only did endurance biking. They got better at their endurance biking. They weren't any better at sprinting. Um, and running for marathons, and particularly training for them, sort of going out three, four times a week, and running 20Ks, 30Ks, can be damaging for your health. Um, and that's all I'd like to say. Thanks. Reasonable 